Hey everybody, this is Russ from Metro Game Core. Today we're going to do a deep dive comparison between the Miu Mini and the Ambernic RG280V. Now the Miu Mini is a relative newcomer to the whole retro handheld scene, it just came out a couple months ago, and demand for it has been so high that it's been kind of hard to get a hold of. Meanwhile, the Ambernic RG280V has been around for over a year at this point, and I've done a previous video about how the 280V was the handheld that I end up playing the most. And so in today's video, we're going to see whether or not the new hotness of the Miu Mini has what it takes to unseat the 280V from its current throne. Now when I say deep dive, I do mean this is going to be a deep dive. We're going to leave no stones unturned in this video here. And in the end, my goal here is to help you make a purchase decision between these two models. Perhaps you already own one of them and you're thinking about getting the other one, or you're just starting from scratch and you're not really sure which direction to go. Now one thing to note here is these are not the only two micro or mini handhelds available on the market today. But I think in the end, when it comes to size and screen and playability, these two are by far the best models. And so we're not going to factor in these models here, and I've made videos about each of these anyway. Instead, we'll just do a laser focus on the Miu Mini and the 280V. And so, without any further delay, let's jump into it. So I'm going to break each of these down by category. We're going to start with craftsmanship. This is overall build quality and just feel in the hands. Now, Ambernick is well known for making high quality products, and the 280V is no exception. The front here has a brushed metal plate, which is very nice on the eyes. And this also comes in two different color models. I'll show those off later as well. One of my favorite things about the 280V is that the 2.8 inch screen is slightly elevated from the device itself. And to me, this gives it a tiny little advantage in the sense that the picture seems to pop out of the screen just a tiny little bit. I would say as a whole, when it comes to looking at the D-pad and face buttons, as well as the quality of the plastic that surrounds the shell itself, they're all of very high quality. Another nice feature about this device is that it has support for two SD cards. What this means is you can put the operating system on one SD card and then all of your games on the other. And therefore, when you update your operating system, you're only going to mess with that and not affect your games at all. And that's one of the beauties of having this two card setup. Now, admittedly, the design on this is not perfect. For example, the speaker on the back is something I've never really liked. But I would say overall, the quality of the plastic and just the feel of the device all in one is very nice. It does have shoulder and trigger buttons here on the top, as well as a headphone jack and a USB-C charging port. And we'll do a more individual look at each of these buttons here later. But for now, just kind of overall feel and craftsmanship, I do give this one high marks. Now to me, the definitive test of whether or not something is made well is whether or not it rattles when you shake it. That's something that just kind of annoys me. And unfortunately, this device does rattle. Now the rattling actually comes from the volume buttons, and so that's my one big demerit when it comes to craftsmanship for this device is that it's not silent when you shake it around. That being said, almost no device is. But it is a bit of a wasted opportunity compared to all the other buttons on the device, this is the only one that makes the noise. Now, moving over to the Miu Mini, this one has some nice craftsmanship too, but in different ways. Probably most striking about it is that it resembles a very small Game Boy. And the plastic on this is also of high quality, although it does have a little bit less of a gritty texture to it. And so in that sense, the device as a whole feels a little bit more slick. Now, like with the case, the D-pad and face buttons are a little bit slick as well. We'll talk more about those in a different section. When it comes to the screen itself, I love the fact that it has these tiny little bezels, and the display sits flush with the case itself. Also on the left side, I appreciate the fact that it has a volume wheel instead of volume buttons. This is a really nice feature. Up top, all we have is the power button, and then on the back you can see it has these angled shoulder buttons about three quarters of the way up the device. Another neat feature about the Miu Mini is that it has a removable and replaceable battery. And so if you wanted to pick up extra batteries, you'd be able to extend the life of your device instead of having to charge it every time. So that's pretty neat. On the bottom, we have a headphone jack, a single SD card slot, as well as a USB-C charging port. Now on this device, the firmware is actually flashed on the internal storage of the device itself. And the SD card is going to hold your skins and your apps and your games too. So updating the firmware on this is a matter of flashing the device itself, which does come with some risks. But overall, it's a pretty easy process. So yeah, I think when it comes to overall craftsmanship, both the 280V and the Miu Mini get very high marks. Now of course we need to do the shake test, and unfortunately this one also fails. Now the rattle is actually coming from the shoulder buttons, not from the volume wheel or anything else like that. Which is unfortunate because all the other buttons on this one are also solid. But I would say the rattle on the Miu Mini is much more apparent than on the 280V. Okay, moving on, let's do pocketability. So this is overall weight and size and things like that. As you can see, 125 grams for the 280V and 105 grams for the Miu Mini. So the Miu Mini is about 20% lighter. Now in terms of overall thickness, the 280V is almost exactly 20 millimeters in thickness at its very thickest point. And I hear a lot about how the 280V is thicker than the Miu Mini. And I think in comparison of the two, this one definitely feels chonkier. 
However, when you actually measure the thickness of the Miu Mini at its thickest point, it's actually a little bit thicker than the 280V. And a lot of that has to do with the amount that the D-pad sticks out from the frame. But there's no denying that the Miu Mini at least feels smaller than the 280V. And I think a lot of that has to do with the narrow shape of it. This seems to be more true to the original Game Boy form factor. And I think a good scale here is going to be a pack of playing cards. As you see here, the 280V is quite a bit thicker and shorter than a standard deck of playing cards. Meanwhile, the Miu Mini is almost exactly the same size, both in terms of thickness as well as height and width. In fact, if you grab a case for playing cards, you can actually fit the Miu Mini inside of that. And I'll have links to this in the video description. And it's pretty funny because I think the seller of this is trying to figure out why he keeps selling so many cases, and he has no idea it has to do with the Miu Mini and not actual playing cards. But yeah, I think in terms of just overall pocketability, whether or not I'm willing to throw this in my pocket when I'm running around in town, I would say they're both pretty good in that regard, but the Miu Mini does feel just a little bit more pocketable. And the 280V just feels thicker as a device, but it doesn't have to do with the actual thickness. I think it has to do more with the width and squareness of the device overall. Okay, moving over to D-pad and face buttons. We'll start with the 280V here. Now, like I mentioned before, Ambernick is well known in this space for having very high quality buttons and craftsmanship. And to me, the buttons in the D-pad on the 280V are just about perfect. The amount of travel and texture of the buttons in D-pad just feel really good to me. And to be honest, it's kind of hard to articulate the difference here, but I think the proof is in the pudding. And when I pick up the 280V, I always have a pleasurable experience. I've never once had a moment where I'm pushing down on the D-pad or the face buttons, and it just doesn't feel right to me. Part of that has to do with the gritty texture of the D-pad and buttons themselves. But overall, I would say it's the travel and just the very precise springiness of the buttons in D-pad. Now the Miu Mini is very similar in that regard, but it does have some distinctions here. Number one, the buttons and D-pad feel slick. And personally, I prefer to have texture on my buttons and D-pad. The travel on the face buttons and the D-pad is slightly mushier than on the 280V. When I push down this, it just doesn't feel as precise. On top of that, I get a little bit of resistance when pushing down on the D-pad and the face buttons. To me, it's almost like the size of these don't fit the case perfectly. Now when it comes to the D-pad, the travel is pretty good, although it is a little bit squeaky in certain angles. One of the things that does bother me the most about it is the lack of texture on the D-pad. What that ends up feeling for me is kind of a slick experience. And I don't think it's enough to really affect my gameplay in a real negative way, but it is something that I do notice while playing. In fact, it reminds me the most of the original NES D-pad. Now I grew up with the NES D-pad, so I'm very familiar with the feel of this. I do think it still has a very nice pivot to it, but my main complaint is the mushiness of this D-pad compared to today's standards. And in that regard, I do think the Mio Mini has improved upon that because it does have better travel. Now the RG280V is probably most like the SNES controller, but like with the NES controller, the Super Nintendo controller is also mushy by today's standards. In that regard, I do think that the 280V is superior because it has a little bit more travel, in full disclosure, this controller is from the Super Nintendo Mini, which is why it has a little bit of texture on the D-pad itself. I think on the original Super Nintendo, it didn't have this much texture. Now, one last thing to note, something I didn't notice until I was filming, is that there's a little bit of dust around the edges of the buttons as well as the D-pad on the Mio Mini. And I think this is the culprit when it comes to the resistance and squeakiness of these buttons altogether. I honestly think the D-pad and the face buttons are just a little bit too big for the case itself. I think this could be modified if you took some sandpaper against the edges of the case and the inner side of the buttons as well as the D-pad. But unfortunately, I don't think that's something that people should be expected to do in order to have a nice experience with their device. And so when it comes down to it, I prefer the D-pad and face buttons of the 280V. Okay, now let's move on to ergonomics and comfort overall. I get a lot of comments about the 280V from people who have never touched it, and the first thing they say is, man, this looks very uncomfortable. And honestly, I gotta agree. Part of that has to do with the fact that the shoulder buttons on this device are just too far away from the D-pad and the face buttons. This ends up meaning that you have to stretch in order to push the buttons, and overall, it's just not a pleasant experience. Additionally, when you interlace your fingers in order to hold this device since it's so small, it also is kind of an odd experience. And I think if you're holding it like this and you rest your fingers up on the shoulder buttons, you're going to lose feeling in your hands after about 20 minutes or so of playing. And so this is how I've learned to hold the device in the most comfortable way. What I do is I hold it near the bottom half of the device, and then I don't interlace my fingers. I kind of keep them spread a little bit apart from one another. And when I hold it in this way, I can usually play upwards of 30 minutes with little to no problem. And obviously that's not ideal, especially if you want to have long play sessions, but I don't think these devices are made for long play sessions in the first place. And in general, I've adapted my 
my game library to not depend on games that require shoulder buttons. Now thankfully, the systems that are supported on these devices typically aren't going to need shoulder buttons in the first place, so that does alleviate the problem. But even when you're playing something like Metroid Zero Mission, it's not too hard to just press the L1 and R1 buttons on the edges when you need them. And so overall, I would say this is one of the major negatives of the 280V. The fact that the buttons are so low down on the device itself, it doesn't have much of a chin, and the fact that you're probably going to actively avoid the shoulder and trigger buttons. Now surprisingly, the Mio Mini is a completely different feeling experience when you hold it in the hands. And part of that has to do with the shoulder buttons. These are pretty well inset into the device itself. And because they're only three quarters of the way up the device, it is relatively comfortable to hold the shoulder buttons while you're playing. But that being said, the device is so narrow that you have no choice but to interlace your fingers. There's just no other comfortable way to hold this device. If you try to push your fingers away from one another, it feels very awkward, like you're only holding the device with the very tips of your fingers. And so in that regard, I do think you're gonna be forced to cram your fingers together when you're playing the device. And to me, that's not ideal. On top of that, the fact that it has a a removable battery is actually a negative in this regard. And that's because while you're playing the device, you're going to slightly twist it as it shifts in your hands. And what's going to happen is the back plate is going to kind of shift along with it. And it ends up giving you a very cheap feeling experience in the end. And so, paradoxically, even though the shoulder buttons are well inset into the device and more comfortable, the actual narrowness of the Miu Mini itself, as well as the slick and slightly squeaky D-pad, and the face buttons that just give a little bit too much resistance, I find that the overall comfort of playing the Miu Mini is actually less than the 280V. And that experience baffles me to this day, because even when I see myself playing the Miu Mini, to me it looks like it's going to be more comfortable. On paper, the ergonomics should be superior on the Miu Mini. But after owning the Mio Mini for a couple months now, the factors just kind of all stack up. The loose feeling battery case, the interlacing of the fingers, all that kind of stuff just kind of drives me up the wall. And of course with the 280V I had to adapt my playing style in order to work, but once I figured that out and just started not using games that required shoulder buttons, I had a much better time. Overall, I think using a slightly wider device works in your favor when it comes to ergonomics and overall comfort, provided you're willing to make the concessions to play the 280V comfortably. Okay, now let's look at software and the overall user interface. One thing to note here, there is a power and a reset button on the 280V, and you can actually tap the reset button to turn the device on. And the Mio Mini only has that one power button. And so let's power these up at the same time here and see how long it takes. Now these are both Linux-based operating systems here, so the boot up time is not going to be terribly long. And as you can see here, the Mio Mini takes about 11 seconds altogether to boot up, whereas the 280V takes just shy of 13 seconds. So now let's talk about the operating system on the 280V. This uses an operating system called OpenDingX, and what I'm running here is something called the Atom firmware image. This takes the most recent OpenDingX beta firmware and integrates it with a front end called Simple Menu, and the emulation on this device happens mostly through a special version of RetroArch that was built specifically for this chipset. Now this chip has been in production for a long time here, and OpenDingX has been available for nearly 10 years at this point. And so when it comes down to it, this firmware has been perfectly honed and optimized for these little devices. And when you couple that with the Atom firmware image like I am here, it results in a very seamless experience. I love the fact that I can navigate through the games while looking at the box art. And you have options when it comes to changing out different themes and then also favoriting your games and things like that. And I'm not going to get too much in the weeds about all this stuff because I've done two different videos about the Atom firmware image, which I recommend you watch if you do want to get this device. But overall, there's some really neat features here. For example, you can auto start a game, which means that it's only going to start that game when you power on the device. And depending on the system, you have various emulators that you can use with each game. And each of these settings are configurable in a per game basis. For example, with this game in particular, if you find that it works best with one certain emulator, you can turn that on for this game and then never have to worry about it again. And that auto start function is a really nice feature for those who just want to get in and out of one game at a time. For example, the 280V is my wife's primary gaming handheld, and it's set to run Dr. Mario every time she turns it on. And that's exactly how she treats it, basically like a small Dr. Mario machine. And she plays on that thing at least a little bit every single day. So yeah, when it comes to the overall user interface, big fan of Simple Menu as well as the Atom firmware image, and I love the back end of OpenDingX Beta and RetroArch behind it. Some other distinguishing features about the 280V, this has a really nice Pico 8 emulator embedded into it, which unfortunately is not available on the Miu Mini. The Miu Mini just relies on a RetroArch core that is not very well optimized. So if you're a big fan of Pico 8, then the Ambernic 280V is really going to be your only choice. And because the 280V has been around for quite a while now, it has some ports that are available for it that aren't going to be available on the Miu Mini. For example, Super Mario 64 port works on this, as well as Streets of Rage Remake. 
Now that being said, the amount of themes that are available in Simple Menu are somewhat numbered. I think there's only about half a dozen that are really worth checking out. And so in that sense, there's not a ton of variety, but it is a solid product. On the other end of the spectrum, here's the Mio Mini running Onion OS, and I did a video about this recently. This is a community-led project that has reskinned the Mio Mini's original firmware and improved upon it in a lot of ways. So check out that video if you're thinking about getting a Mio Mini. Now, one of my favorite things about Onion OS is that it's just super simple and easy to navigate as well. In fact, I would say it's more intuitive to navigate in Onion OS than it is in Simple Menu. Another feature that's really fundamental to the Mio Mini is the ability to change the color and screen options for the device itself. So you can go in here and adjust the saturation and the contrast, and the hue, and they also have a brightness function here, which I think is actually exposure or gamma instead. And within the main settings, there's also a brightness option here, which is going to do the overall brightness of the screen itself. So overall, having the ability to change the colors and the brightness of the device is a really excellent component because it allows you to dial in the settings that you like the best. And this is very rare on a retro handheld. On top of that, Onion OS has a lot of neat features that are embedded into the app section. For example, it has a cartridge function which works a lot like the auto start you find in Simple Menu. This will basically boot one single game up every time. On top of that, you can do things like change the internal clock of the device, or you could just jump into RetroArch and make some changes to the emulators right here and there. That being said, on both the Atom firmware image and Onion OS, they have tweaked the RetroArch settings to be optimal for your device. Now, one place where the Mio Mini really shines is the ability to add additional themes. They have a lot of themes available already, which is really impressive. They have a whole theme repository on the Onion OS website. Now, changing out themes is not as simple as it is on the Atom firmware image. You actually have to power down the device every time you change out a theme, but not a huge deal. Now, unfortunately, Onion OS is very limited in what it can do in terms of an operating system. And that's because, like I mentioned before, the firmware is actually baked onto the internal storage of the device. And so Onion OS is trying to make the best of what it can, but what this device really needs is its own custom firmware built from the ground up. And that's in the works, but it's not quite available yet. And so in that sense, I do think that there is some future growth for Onion OS, whereas with the Atom firmware image on the 280V, it's basically a very mature system already. You're probably not going to see a lot of new and exciting features for the 280V compared to something like the Mio Mini, which is just now getting started. Now, one thing to note here is that the 280V has true sleep to it while the Mio Mini doesn't. For example, if I put this mystery game to sleep right here, all it's really doing is turning off the screen and the buttons, and that's about it. As soon as I quote unquote wake up the device, you can see that the clock has continued to run while it was in sleep. And so I would say, unlike with the 280V, the Mio Mini doesn't have a true sleep function at all. And so I guess when it comes down to it, if I had to decide between one operating system or the other, I do prefer the Atom firmware image. Part of that has to do with the fact that it's very easy and quick to navigate through the menus, and you can also see the box art as you're browsing through. Now you can browse through box art on the Mio Mini, but you can't do it at the same time as seeing the titles of the games, and that does kind of bother me. On top of that, navigating through the system is quite a bit slower than it is on the 280V, which has been heavily optimized. And so despite the fact that I would say that the simple menu interface is a little bit unintuitive compared to what's in Onion OS, at this point, I would prefer to use the custom Atom firmware image over what's on the Mio Mini. Now, that being said, I'm fully confident that the Mio Mini development is going to continue in the months and maybe even years to come. And so I do think that once Onion OS gets a couple more updates, as well as once we have some true custom firmware on the device, we might be singing a different tune. Okay, let's talk about display quality. Now, there's actually quite a bit of disparity in this regard. The 280V has a 320 by 480 display, which gives you half height pixels on the vertical orientation. Meanwhile, the Mio Mini has a 640 by 480 display, which looks beautiful on this tiny little device. On top of that, the colorization is better on the 280V, and thanks to those options of being able to add contrast and things like that, the overall look and everything is just so much better on the Mio Mini than it is the 280V. Now, that being said, neither of these screens are what I would consider to be bad, and I think if you only had one, you may not even notice the difference between the two. But in a side-by-side -side comparison like this, I do think it is night and day. Even using a macro lens to get really in there with the pixels, you can just see how nice and scaled they are on the Mio Mini on the right compared to the 280V on the left. In order to get relatively square pixels on the 280V, you have to use interpolation, and in that sense it does add some artifacting and just results in a less clear picture. Meanwhile, the Mio Mini just looks sharp and clear no matter what. On top of that, I would say the hue skews a little bit green on the 280V more than it should. And so I think in any sort of measurable quantity here, the Mio Mini is a better screen. They're both not bad, but the Mio Mini wins hands down. Now let's talk about sound quality. Let's play a little bit first. 
Now there's a couple things going on here. Number one, the 280V does sound better to me. And I think that's because it has a bigger and higher quality speaker inside of it. However, the speaker is on the back. And in the end, that does result in a couple things. Number one, it makes the overall sound a little bit muffled, depending on how you're holding it. And it also makes the device quite loud for anybody else who's not playing it. On the other hand, the Mio Mini has a speaker that does face you, but the quality and the size of this speaker is quite a bit worse than the 280V. It also has a tinnier sound to it, and I also don't like to use it at a higher volume because it does tend to distort the bass frequencies when you do it at a higher volume. And so yeah, I'd say neither are perfect, but the 280V does sound a little bit richer. Okay, now let's talk about performance and overall battery life. In terms of just raw performance power, the Mio Mini actually is a little bit more powerful than the 280V. But overall, the performance result is about the same, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that the chipset on the 280V has been in development for a very long time. And so it's been optimized to a T at this point. And the Mio Mini is the first time that its particular chipset has been used on a device before. And so in the long run, there may be some optimizations that we'll see in the future. But for now, they're kind of neck and neck. I would say they can play all the way up to PS1 with relatively minor problems. There are certain games like Tekken 3 that'll run better on the Mio Mini than they will on the 280V. And the same goes with certain SNES titles. But even then, I would say 95% of Super Nintendo as well as PS1 games are going to play just fine on either device. Now one nice feature about each of these devices is that they're so small that you can use them for one-handed gaming. And this is going to work out really well if you like to play, say for example, turn-based role-playing games, things that aren't going to require you to press the D-pad and the face buttons at the same time. And so if you want to run through your favorite 16 or 32-bit role-playing game, this is going to be a really nice fit. And I would say in that regard, the Mio Mini is actually a little bit better than the 280V for one-handed gaming too. And so yeah, when it comes to performance, I do think the Mio Mini is a little bit better, but not perfect. In terms of battery life, they both get about four hours, so I don't think there's going to be a big difference there either. But the fact that it does have a user-replaceable battery on the Mio Mini does kick it up just a tiny bit too. Okay, and last section here is price and availability. The 280V retails at something like $80, but it is pretty easy to find cheaper versions on AliExpress. For example, this seller here is one that I've recommended before, and they actually will ship out of the United States for about $71. Now you have two choices of colors here. You have a black and silver color as well as a red and gold one. I personally like the black and silver one, but you might like the other one too. Now if you don't want to wait the typical two to three weeks of shipping from AliExpress, you can actually order the 280V on Amazon and it is going to cost a little bit more, but you'll have the ability to use Prime Shipping to get it very quickly, as well as having hassle-free returns in case there's something wrong with the device. Now the Miu Mini is much harder to find. It is listed on AliExpress, you can find it for around $64, but availability on the Mini has actually not been very great at all. In fact, on other stores like the Keep Retro store here, you can see that they don't plan on shipping until the end of March. And so by virtue of the 280V just being around for a year plus at this point, it is more widely available. And you may end up paying more than the Miu Mini to get it, but it is going to be easier to find. Okay, so we're actually going to start wrapping up the video here. And believe it or not, there are more things I could say about these devices, but I've already said them in previous videos. So I'd recommend checking out the Atom firmware image videos I've already done on this device, in addition to the 280V videos I've done on this channel too. And same story with the Mio Mini. I did a review on this, as well as a dedicated video about Onion OS. But at the end of the day, the whole point of this comparison video was to say which one I prefer over the other. And of course, the one caveat I feel compelled to say is that these are both really nice devices. The fact that we can get either of these devices for under $75 and they can play up to PS1 is kind of a little modern marvel. And like I've said in previous videos, if I had just one of these devices and I handed it to the younger version of me, I think the younger version of me would have been head over heels happy with either of these choices. And so, of course, my caveat here before giving my scores is going to be that these are both excellent devices and I'm happy with both of them. But one needs to be a winner. So let's look at the chart first. Now, first point here, this is just my one opinion, right? And everyone's welcome to have other opinions about all of these things. But I did go here category by category and kind of give a number score to my experience with each of these. And yes, the total between the two is equal. And that wasn't done on purpose in any way, that's just kind of how the cards fell out. And I think that does say a lot about how nice each of these devices are. On top of that, I do think it speaks to the fact that these are both imperfect, too. Because out of a possible 110 points, each of these only got 85. And so obviously the numbers game isn't going to work, so let's move on to something a little bit more concrete. And so let's see what Chicken prefers. I'm going to put each of these devices near her and see which one she's most interested in. And at first, the 280V seems to be the most interesting, but it appears that she does want to check out the Mio Mini too. Now, unfortunately, after that, she kind of lost interest. And I would say that's expected when you put a handheld device in front of a cat. 
but she was less interested in the 280V than the Mio Mini. So take that for what it's worth. Okay, all kidding aside here, I do need to make a decision. And so if I had to decide between the 280V and the Mio Mini, and I could only take one of these devices with me on a trip or whatever it happens to be, then I think at the end of the day, I'm going to choose the 280V. And honestly, I think the proof is in the pudding because there have been times when I've needed to grab a little device to take with me on the go. And despite having the Miu Mini and everything else, I always pick the 280V instead. A lot of that has to do with just the overall button feel and just how much of a joy it is to hold this thing in my hands. And yes, it's not perfect. I did have to adapt my playing style to meet the ergonomics of this device. And that does limit me when it comes to certain games that require shoulders and triggers. But other than that, when it comes to 20 minute play sessions, the 280V wins for me every time. And of course, this is just my one opinion, but I'm interested to hear yours. So let me know down in the comments below which one you prefer, the 280V or the Miu Mini. Or do you think I'm just crazy for liking these little devices and I should just play a Steam Deck instead? Anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.